My friend's wedding keeps getting more and more expensive. Rehearsal dress, wedding day dress, and shoes, flight, hotels, themed outfits for dinner, and more. It's out of control, and I'm afraid to bring it up with them. What do I do? Oh, this is a tough one. I, first of all, I have a question for you because I've been a part of a couple of weddings. I think someone's like opening a garage. I don't know if you can hear that loud noise. No, I can't. I've been a part of a couple of weddings. And I don't know, was this person in the wedding party or are they just a it guest at like the it. wedding? No, they are clearly in the wedding party because okay. they said uh, wedding, like wedding day dress, rehearsal dress. So this person has to go to the rehearsal dinner. Mm, okay. They have to be in the wedding dress. They have to buy shoes, buy the flight, get the hotels. They apparently have themed outfits for dinner and more. That's what I want to ask you about. What is a themed outfit for dinner? Like what is what what would that be? I've never I've never been fortunate enough to experience what that is. You know, I feel like if we could go back in time and redo your wedding. One of your themed outfits would be late night snack foods, and you would show up as popcorn. Wait, so am I, are people wearing costumes to this? Is this what, is it like a no, costume party? No, I have party? no idea. <laughs> themed outfits for dinner. I don't know. How many dinners are you having? You're having the rehearsal dinner and then the dinner at the wedding. Is there more dinners? I have yeah. no idea. It's not there's like a secondary, like a third dinner in there? Like a, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Here's, I have okay. no idea. My thoughts on weddings is that oh gosh it's not gonna be kind of, don't gonna be, have them they're why terrible. would you do that no <laughs> it's it becomes a huge it's become a huge financial event and not only an obligation for the couple it used to be a financial obligation for the family and like you know either you know bride and groom's family the, the couple's you know finances are impacted now it's a financial obligation for everybody like people are tacking on all of these other expenses, like the mm -hmm. fact that you have to have multiple outfits, you gotta what, you gotta have a gift more than likely, you gotta have something, you gotta travel. Mm -hmm. It's become this obligation, and I don't know when that switch flipped to where all of a sudden weddings just had to be this very expensive extravaganza thing. I don't know if it's a from like you know TV reality TV shows have kind of pushed that TV. out there. I'm not sure. I don't know. I know that whenever I was planning my mar my wedding, I got wed wedded. I got <laughs> married in <laughs> I got married in 2011. And I remember wanting it to be extravagant, but I had a $20,000 budget mm -hmm. that my mom had saved $20,000. I was so thankful. I'm very very like thankful. Your mom was my great. Mom she's on it. it. She's, she's amazing. Well, I started dating this guy very seriously when I was a freshman in college and she was like, oh gosh, I should start saving for a wedding. <laughs> and then we broke up and she was like, well, let me just keep saving. And so Might by the well. time it was, yeah, like, you know, however many years later, um, she had that much saved. And she said, whatever you don't use, you can keep. Mm. So I was right very determined. I was like, okay. So when she was like, I think that we should have these nice flower centerpieces i was like no we don't need that here's what we're gonna do instead like, i'm printing I... out pictures of flowers and laying them on the table <laughs> <laughs> so for me i had this incentive right but yeah. i also didn't i struggled with money you know i was very much struggling with money so i tried to be very aware of that when it came to mm. my bridesmaids and things like that you now some people yeah, some people did have to travel. Some people did have to get a hotel room. Um, but like I, instead of going to like a really expensive dress place, I found a dress at Dillard's that everyone could buy for like $60. See, and I was like, okay, buy this dress, go. bring your own shoes, you know, here's your necklace. Um, but that's not the case. And I have seen it kind of spiral because mm, you're right. Yeah. Like whenever my mom got married, she it was like in the KC Hall. It was like just super simple and they like, homemade wedding cake homemade groom's cake people would like bring food for dinner like yeah, everyone exactly. would chip in kind of thing yeah previous generations um, weddings were like 150 dollars. like it was, it was a much different situation yeah so i think that honestly i was hoping that with covid it would kind of ca cause this like pause or mm. this this look at weddings in a different light because it had become so extravagant yeah, and yeah. i think it did for a short period of time. And I don't know if that's held on to, to be like this new thing. Um, but no, I mean, this is a lot of money and you're looking at easily, like let's think you have to, even just driving to a place, driving to a wedding, buy, buying a dress for it, buying a gift and a hotel and gas, that's gonna be a thousand dollars for a oh, weekend, yeah. easily, if not more. So you're looking at a thousand dollar plus commitment 
that can be very overwhelming. And when you're asked to be in the wedding, you can't, yeah. you don't feel like you can say no. no. It's not like you can just not go. And how many stories so. have you heard? I've seen so many stories online. I've heard people talk about them where when they speak up about costs, like when they're like they're in the bridal party, and they speak up about the costs, they can get like shunned where they're like, you're no longer part of this friend group. You're out. Like, how dare you have something to say about my wedding? I've seen that. I've seen yeah. multiple stories of that. So it's like you're almost like, even though it may be too expensive, you, you're almost mm -hmm. in a position where it's you can't really even complain. You just got to take it and be like, oh, well, well, I guess I'm going to be, you know, in some debt now because I got to be a part of this wedding. Yeah, so, and that's so hard because I would hate for someone to go into debt for a wedding that's not even their own. But here's yeah. what I would recommend to this person who sent in. I would say, okay, rehearsal dress, like hopefully you have control over the cost of that dress, right? Like look at what you can control yeah, because there are yeah. some things that are out of your control here because you said yes. For example, yeah. the wedding day dress. If you're in the wedding, typically the bride will choose the wedding, you know, the, the dress for the bridesmaids. You can't control that, no, but you might no. be able to control the shoes that you wear. You might be able to borrow shoes, borrow jewelry, have someone else do your hair and makeup, a talented friend, instead of paying to have it done. Um, hotels, okay. Oh, wait, before you, before you, you can... go to hotels, I want to I talk about the outfits a little bit here. I had a question for okay. you. Okay, okay. Because... Uh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about a couple of things you were saying. And I forgot to ask you sooner. When I think men have it much easier. Like to be a groomsman, there's obviously there's expenses, but it's nowhere near what yeah. women have to deal with. Like, cause guys don't really need to do it. I mean, they just get a regular haircut. They would already get. They, yeah, there's exactly. no makeup. You know, you're more than likely renting a tux, and tuxes mm -hmm. aren't that expensive to rent. So guys have a very low threshold of the financial impact we're faced with. Mm -hmm. So I would ask you. From someone, have you been a bridesmaid before? I, I have. Okay. I have. I've been so, a bridesmaid in Amanda's wedding. Oh, Am who the one? Oh, who told me about your nickname, Megaphone? I love Amanda. Uh, so, <laughs> Megaphone. From the perspective of a woman who's been a bridesmaid, how much pressure is there to go along with all of the process? Because you're talking about the outfit, right? Like, is there going to be pushback oh. if you're if you want to get your hair done on your own or do your own makeup and like make some decisions on your own? Um, okay, so I think it definitely depends on the person. And I was pregnant with my second child for, and I was in Amanda's wedding and I was like seven months pregnant. Oh, you so were real pregnant. I was. So I had to take the wet, the bridesmaid's dress and I not only had to buy the bridesmaid's dress, but then I had to have it altered oh, for no. my pregnancy. So I had to buy like a bigger size, but then have it like, it, so it, it was, that was an extra added cost for me, but her bridesmaid's dress wasn't super expensive. We could have gotten our hair. She had a hair and makeup team come in, but it was not required. Hmm. I, at the last minute, decided to splurge for it because I saw everyone else's hair and makeup and I was like, dang, I look bad. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I splurged and had my hair and makeup done. You know, I paid like $150 or whatever to have my hair and makeup done. Then you have the shoes, right? You have all of these things. It gets yeah. very expensive. Now, Amanda's wedding was incredible. I mean, it was, in, it was the nicest wedding I've ever been to. It blew my wedding out of the water. It was amazing. <laughs> and her dad, though, paid for all of the wedding parties, hotel rooms for two oh, nights. Oh, that's so nice. So that was nice because I didn't, so I didn't have to take on that expense. Um, and that was like a really, really big help, but it is, it is a lot. And then you also forget you have a bridal, you have a bridal, uh, shower. Oh yeah. And then you have yeah. the bachelorette party, right? That's and right. so Amanda went to Vegas for her bachelorette party. I did not go because I was so pregnant. Um, but her dad was paying for all the hotels there as well. <laughs> so, uh, you, you hope to have a friend that has a dad like Amanda's dad, <laughs> but not every dad is that is financially stable. Stable. Yeah. Yeah. So I think too, like if you're, it's one thing, like if people are out of state, you kind of, you know, you can invite them and if they want to come, they can come. But I think yeah. for your bridal party, it feels like to me, the responsibility is on the bride and groom to make this a easy process for mm -hmm their people yeah like you just because this is what you want you can't then impose mm -hmm. those financial requirements on everyone else and if you right. have strict things you want to, in my opinion you need to pay for it like that's your cost because that's what wow. you want if you want it to look like this that's your decision and it shouldn't even be the dress every, like what like the bridesmaids dresses yeah if you pick if dresses. you pick an expensive dress like if you're picking like a 500 dollars dress then that's on oh you gosh, that was your choice right? right yeah you said that's not expensive no. 
I said that is expensive. Yeah, like I mean, I guess if it's like a fifty dollar dress or something, like something mm-hmm. affordable, then I can see you'd be like, hey, you know, asking them, do are you okay? Do you mind doing this? But if you're asking for like really expensive things that are going to go into mm-hmm. this, to me, that's your decision. That's not your yeah. your guests, your bridal party's decision. I feel like mm-hmm. you should help with that if you're going to require that because that's not, that's not yeah. fair. It's like me calling up my friend. Yeah. Hey, I want to throw this party. But I want I you need... all to bring the food, the music, I want yeah. you to put a deposit down on the building. Like, that's not fair to them because I want to do something. I can see that. I think that maybe, you know, you obviously value very simple weddings, and that's just not the case for everyone. No, no. And when you're invited to a wedding and you feel like you have to participate in the extravagance of it all, you know, then it's going to come at a cost financially. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it 100% is. The other wedding I've been in was my brother's. But it was very inexpensive because I could stay at my mom's house. I was in our hometown. So I stayed at my mom's house. You know, all I had to buy was my dress and a gift. That was really Mm -hmm. it, you know. And so that wasn't bad. I did my own hair and makeup then. Um, That wasn't bad at all. So it really just depends. But I want to get back to this person. And I want to give her some. (laughs) You're you're just getting (laughs) off on. Yeah, you were just really not happy with uh, the American (laughs) dream wedding. Um, but for her, what I would say is, yes, it all adds up. And I don't know how far you are into this process if you've already purchased some of these things. But I would say, like, in the future, number one, try to reuse as much as you can. Mm, for instance, yeah. a rehearsal dress. You you should be able to pick your own rehearsal dinner dress. So wear a dress you already have. Wear shoes you already have. The bridesmaid's dress, you might not have a say in that. Yeah. But if you're not a bridesmaid, right, if you're just going to the wedding, choose a dress you already have. You re rewear shoes, borrow shoes. I've borrowed shoes for my friend once to get uh brand photos taken. I was just like, hey, I need these, I need these really nice heels. Let me like and we but we let each other borrow things that we wouldn't necessarily use all the time. Mm, yeah. Right. So yeah. I don't need those all the time. There's they're too fancy. So why would I go out and spend all my money on them when I have a friend that will is the same shoe size as me? Um, same thing for like even hotels trying to room with someone. I mean, obviously, if you're going with a significant other, that makes it more difficult. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. if you can say, okay, I'm going to go and we're going to room with these, you know, three other bridesmaids. So there's four people sharing the cost of one hotel room that can really, really cut down. Yeah, it it can. Whatever you can do to kind of like combine and share costs is definitely Mm -hmm. going to be helpful. I was going to ask you because I feel like I don't have the experience on this because for men, it's just a much lighter lift. Yes. I, and also, I was going to say, there's these options now for renting clothes. Now, there's not as many for yes. men. I don't really see like a bunch of options for like men to do the this. the runway. Yeah. So how, how viable is that? And, and have you ever used it before? Is it like actually? Oh, like, oh I can. You know, sometimes I rent the runway for my workout shorts and my oh, old no. t-shirt that I wear around the house. No, <laughs> I mean, I've never done it. But I've heard people that have that go to these really nice dinners. And it's perfect for people who you don't go. You're not going to wear it again. Right. Mm-hmm. You're not going to wear it again or, or you don't have that many opportunities to dress nice and dress up. So I do think that's actually a really good idea, Chris. Bravo oh, thank on you. that. Thank you. oh, thank you. you're, you're you're welcome. Um, but I, I do think that that that's actually really smart. I think maybe you should make oh business idea. Rent the bridesmaids dress. Oh, but you'd have to have like a bunch of them though. Like you'd have to have a bunch of yeah. similar dresses. Oh, and all the same size. That's yeah. a very high startup cost. Never mind. Never, Don't take, do take it. Take that back. Take that back. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I will say that it sounds like for this person who, who wrote in, they're they're afraid to bring it up. So it seems oh, yeah. like I mean it must mean that like it's gotten to a point where there's a lot of obligations. Like I think if it was if she had more flexibility maybe she wouldn't be afraid, but it sounds like mm-hmm. it's going to be, she at least fears it's going to be a potential issue to bring this up. Uh, yeah. And, you know, f- for us, I know conflict for us is something that we're both <laughs> learning to deal with. Like, how do you Chris, help? Ha- have Chris and I conflict? are like, Chris and I are like, we both wouldn't say anything. We just <laughs> get to be annoyed and move on. Like, cause I'm like, oh, it's just a one time event, right? This yeah. is something. And I guess that's the thing is like, this isn't, this person's not gonna get married every year. This isn't no. a consistent thing. I mean, you could have like 20 friends and they're all getting married over the next like five well, years. Well, there you go. But maybe what one way they could bring it up is just say like, I'm so excited that you're doing this you know, themed outfit night. What a creative and wonderful idea. I Mm. love the idea of it. Um, I know you already chose our Star Wars costumes for us to wear that night. I'm going to this wedding. (laughs) But I'm wondering if maybe I can go out and buy my own to help me save a little bit of money. 
Like, I, I don't know, just saying something like that or just saying like, okay, I know that you have a hair and makeup crew coming and that they're charging $200 the day of the wedding for you to get oh. your hair and makeup done. Is it okay if I, if, if I do my own hair and makeup, I promise it'll still look great. Right? Like the, like, think about what you control, what you have control over, and then assert your authority over that in a way that is still respectful and kind. And then just being like, I'm really trying to save money right now you know, is it okay if I do this or I, or I miss out on this, you know, like I didn't go to Amanda's bachelorette party. Not, I mean, I wish I could have gone. I was super pregnant and going around in Vegas sounds like misery, but <laughs> yes, but that was also like, that could have been a choice if I didn't have the money. So, mm. you know, obviously I didn't go for a different reason, but like, you don't have to partake in everything. Obviously no. you have, you need to be there at the rehearsal dinner. You need to be there at the wedding. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking too, while you were talking, there's a couple of things. Um, Allie, look at you with your notes. Not, this is weird. You know, like I'm, notes. I'm back in school I here where I didn't take notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you mentioned about like coming, like being kind to like when you approach them to tell them like the situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the parts that I often mess up. Not that I'm like mean to people, but you're so. <laughs> Listen, your wedding is trash. This is trash. I'm, I will not be there. Don't you dare ask me again. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's more like a when you're anxious about something, right? Like for me, if I'm nervous mm -hmm. to approach a situation, there's all this hesitancy. It takes all, all this build up. This is all this emotional energy for me to get to a point where I can even approach them. Cause you're just like worried mm -hmm. about how it's going to go. Are they going to be mad? Are they going to be, a you know, all these things go through your mind. So it takes forever to build up, to get to that point. And then when you finally approach it, sometimes you're just so anxious to get the words out and just like, just rip the bandaid off. It doesn't come out right. Like it almost comes off too direct. Cause you're like, I'm so nervous that I just want to hurry up and say, uh, this is too expensive. I can't afford this. And it may come out as maybe a little more confrontational than you mean, maybe a little more aggressive, maybe a little more like you don't care. And so mm -hmm. I think coming into it thinking, okay, I need to just approach this with kindness. I need to come and be well, I guess, well reasoned in why I am having a difficult time mm -hmm. affording this versus just being so nervous that you just blurt it out. Because I think that's where the miscommunication can occur when you're not very clear. And I find when you're nervous, you're not clear and issues can arise, even though you didn't mean for it to come out that way. I have a feeling, I feel like we're in a therapy appointment for you. Yes, like, we are. Allison, how do we do this? So I, when you were talking about this, it very much reminded me of when I was a school teacher, when I taught hmm. elementary school and I had to confront a, you know, parent about their child. I thought you were going to say a kid, um, a bully in the class. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, like if there was a, you know, if there was a, a kid that was constantly, you know, I don't know, being misbehaving, mm -hmm. having to having to make that initial contact because that can be very nerve wracking. That can be very anxious. You don't know how they're going to respond. Oh, yeah, you don't I can know imagine. if they're mama bear. You don't know any of that. So I always did a compliment sandwich, right? You start oh, with your a famous compliment. compliment sandwich. Yes. Yeah. You put your your concern in and you end with a compliment. So in this type of situation, it can be the same exact thing. A compliment, a compliment concern solution uh c c s okay uh, okay <laughs> anyway so it's a compliment i love that you're wanting this themed star wars dinner i think it's so great your concern um the costumes that you linked to on amazon were really expensive right concern mm -hmm. and i'm trying to save money solution i actually have a friend who has a very similar costume that's letting me borrow it for free i'm going to go ahead and wear that instead is that okay Ooh, solution I love, I love that, that right that, that's so, a, i think that's a great way to approach that well and that's the way like i've always approached just in my job like no one wants like come to the table with a solution in mind. It yeah, doesn't have to be yeah. the solution, but just working in teaching for years, it's like when you have a concern, put forth the effort to think of a solution mm. and the solutions yes. don't have yes. to be difficult to come up with, but then you're not coming off as like nagging and judging and all of this. It's like, Hey, here's my compliment. Here's my concern. Here's a possible solution. What do you think of that? Hmm. Okay. See, I think that's that's perfect because then it's not just a. Cause I think sometimes when you, I don't know, I don't want to say complain because this is a legitimate concern this person has. But sometimes, when yeah, you this voice, is very legit. When you voice your concern, oftentimes it, it can just come off as you complaining if you don't really have. And then you're like, all right, here's my concern. You fix it for me. But if you come mm -hmm. with a solution, like, okay, look, I know I can't do this, but this is what I could do. I think that makes the whole situation so much easier to kind of work through with the other person. Doesn't mean, you know, yeah. some people are just going to be unreasonable. There's nothing you can do about mm -hmm. that. But and, if it, and you can't control their reaction. You can't at all. 
cannot control it. So for instance, here's one more example before we, we head to another break is, Chris, I love that you're so passionate about fiction, but I'm a little concerned that your Star Wars, um, that your in your Star Wars love mm-hmm. is has gone too far and is coming off as a little concerning and a little bit creepy. Have you considered <laughs> inter- putting some reality television into oh. your life and maybe watching The Bachelorette? Right? Compliment, concern, <laughs> solution. <laughs> Now, I want you all to, uh, this was, I'm happy you brought this up, Allison, because this is a really great teaching, learning moment here, that if you're going to come to the person with the solution phase, step three of this, just make sure it is a good solution, right? You don't want to be giving <laughs> bad solutions, because it just doesn't, it doesn't help. It doesn't move the, the situation forward. So thank you, Allison. This is a great moment for us all to learn. You're about. welcome. You're right welcome. Here. And thank you to our anonymous writer who wrote <laughs> in. Um, we, If you listen to this, we would love for you to fill us in on if you took any of our advice or how it all played out. Please let us yeah. know. Please do. And also, if you want to be like our anonymous writer who sent in their awkward situation, you can always, again, just a reminder, you can give us a call at 707-200-8259 or just go to awkwardpodcast.com and there's a place where you can leave your awkward story for us in written form if you don't feel like talking. We'd love to hear your voice, but if you don't feel like it, that's another option for you. 